This is the Swarm and Shoot football show with me, Manny Matsakis, as we kick off season two. We've been fortunate because we've had a, a few good interviews. We bring Lynn Grohl on here, and um, he's able to interview some of our players. And we've got a lot coming up in this upcoming season. And um, this Swarm and Shoot football show is brought to you by Big B Coffee, which I've got right here. And uh, it's right across campus here on North Clinton Street. Get the finest coffee beverages in Defiance, as well as great pastries and breakfast sandwiches to start off your day. And for most of us, we also get a pick-me-up in the afternoon by heading across the street to see Sue and everybody over at Big Coffee. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, BSN Sports. Rob Held, Jim Garris, and the crew over here the sales team are the professionals that you definitely need to get in touch with to get your gear. All the DC gear, if you're a high school program out there listening to this, get in touch with these guys and they will help you out. They do a fantastic job with high schools, colleges, businesses in the, in the area. Um, can get whatever type of apparel they need customized just for their business. So I know uh, Rob does a great job for us. Jim is our rep that I see virtually every week of the year, and it just, it's outstanding customer service. Welcome to the Swarm and Shoot football show. We're back here for a week two look at Hanover College, and a look back at week one, and uh, the trip down to Rose Coach uh, take me through Saturday. It got off to a, uh, a tough start. Well, you had the, the fumble on the first possession that you guys recovered, but then it was uh, tough yeah. after that. Yeah, it was definitely tough. I mean, we faced a team with, you know, the... I mean, no matter how you look at it, we've got five seniors. They got 23 seniors, and uh, thought it took forever. They had senior day, and it was like you were waiting out there for all that. But uh, they're they're a very good team. You could see why a lot of people picked them to win the conference, or they ended up second in the preseason poll because of just uh, a lot of experience. And um, I think that's what got us early in the game. You know, you get down 24 nothing. And um, I thought our defense at many times played r really well. It's just we kept putting them in bad situations, you know, with a drop punt and, and you know, you know, a couple kicking game errors early. And then, um, you know, and, and then they just they got up a bunch. And then by the time we were able to get back in it and do any, anything at that point from the second quarter on, I thought we were able to compete and, and the guys played hard for four quarters. Takeaways for three quarters. Let's yeah. put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Take takeaways from from that game. Uh, it, it came down to explosive plays. Uh, you know, an explosive play statistically is anything over a run over twelve yards or a, a pass completion over fifteen. And you know, they they had plus ten on us, and uh, we didn't create as many offensively, and we gave up a lot. And, you know, they had some one-play drives. They just, bam, they, they hit on us because we were uh, maybe uh, out of position and so forth. So, you know, I, I think that's what we've been working on in practice because you, you, even though you, you can't simulate a game until you have a game, you know, the, and, and it's like um, on paper they know where to go. It's just the speed of the game – for these guys, uh, for our guys, uh, which I think caught them off guard initially. And then, um, you know, then they improved as the game went along. Mentally, was that where the mistakes came more so in, in your mind? Mm, some of it was just jitters by, mm, jitters, you, know, you yeah. have a freshman punter mm. and, you know, he gets the ball and it's it, the snap was fine, but, you know, he bobbles it and the next thing, oh, bam, it's, you know, it's on the ground, you know. So I, I think, th you know, that's one example, but a lot of it was just, um, I think not being able to handle adversity early, um, you know, and, and it's not something we didn't talk about. We we worked it and worked it, but it's nothing like a real game to to sim. You can't simulate a real game in practice. So that was uh, I thought that was something that um, took us out of our game. We were never really on the offensive. Uh, we were always uh, sort of. Uh, waiting for them to do things, and then, then we would respond, which is not how you play this game. 
Take me through offensively. Where were the misfires there in, in your kind of your mind? Oh, a, a lot of them. Uh, numerous times early in the game, that what, what got us behind was that uh, you know we'd be in a situation at second and two. You know, we'd get a good first down play, and then we would try to throw a bomb instead of throwing to a guy that's open for an easy first down, things like that. Or maybe, uh, you know, a young guy on the offensive line, you know, he, he misses a block. And so we, we've got to, you know, we, we take a sack or something like that. And, uh, you know, but I thought those were some of the miscues offensively. And I think all in all, when you look at it and you compare it to how we played them a year before, when you grade everybody out, we actually graded out way better than we did in 2019 when we played them. So it's just the score was comparable. So it's like I, I know we're making progress because you're, you're, you're grading effort, assignment, and technique. And when you see that, um, they have improved. They, I think our players just need to take that next step, and, and at some point the switch turns on and you become more um, – uh, you know, more attack oriented on offense and defense. And then you, you can, you can play the game that we are best at playing. We, we saw some of the speed that you have on each side mm-hmm. of the ball on Saturday, obviously. Yeah. And, and you know, and I talk, talked to Jeff Sokol, their coach, you know, and he just says, wow, he goes, this is not the team we played in 2019. And I guess some of the people that watch the game on their live stream, they, they realize that we're making progress moving forward and, um, you know, so, so we're building on those positives. Only problem is this week we play the team that got, uh, you know, first place preseason, and they're, they're back and loaded at this point. Where, where is your focus this week to improve? Oh, it, it's, I, think, I think right now it's mechanics of the game for us, uh, you know, the, the way that we execute um, our – systems like like getting plays in and and being able to line up properly and identify things so we can slow the game down for our players because that's really what it comes down to it's it's more like when we are more certain about what we're going to do on any side of the ball the game slows down and we can play so i i think we're, we're working a lot more this week on game situations um and so they understand hey it's third and two get the first down why take a shot at a 50 50 ball you know that if you don't get it now we got a punt so it's like start to let's let's convert first downs and eventually we'll start getting explosive plays from that areas that that you liked from a week ago take me through that a little bit and and areas you can build on well I, i think one is matt bolanos our punter i you know other than the first couple after that he punted a 41 yard average i mean he he can boom them and i think he got that out of his system so i feel like that that is a positive for us i think um you know another positive for us is our defense is capable of making big plays and I, i thought there were times when we did a good job getting them in three and outs after we dealt with that first quarter. So I thought those were positives. I thought the the play of Terry Geiger was a positive because, you know, he did a great job on a punt return and he also made some big plays. I mean, Shahid showed his speed, you know, where, you know, that's how we scored, you know, we got a one-on-one on him and, you know, he caught the ball in traffic and, uh, and, and we got our touchdown at, at that point. So it's like, those are some positives you can build off of. I thought John Edwards did a really good job as a slot receiver for us. And, um, you know, he, he's tough. He carries the ball well. He, we had, he had some kickoff returns as well. So I think those are all things we can build on there. And then I just think defensively right now it's more just getting into the system. We've made some adjustments in the system because we've had to switch um, more often from a 4-3 to a 3-4, um, which um, causes – uh, it, it was a learning curve, and, and a lot of that is because it's totally because of COVID, because you don't have as many D linemen. So it's like, let's play a three man front so we could have, you know, give them some, you know, substitutions throughout the game because, um, uh, you know, we're, we're down at that position. Hanover this week, uh, 
obviously the league favorite and another mm-hmm. veteran laden team. Yeah, they, they played just a half a week ago because of some yeah, COVID, COVID issues that yeah. they've had down there with Mount St. Joe. What, what did you see on film from what well, they bring to the table? I see. Well, the interesting thing is, I mean, could they have played? Could they not have played? You know, there, there's all kinds of stuff in the you know other coaches in the conference. I just respect that they even played. You know, uh, played a scrimmage. So, uh, I, from my understanding, it was like they had. A week before, a, a bunch of guys down uh, due to COVID contact tracing. And then they were all coming back, and they would only have gotten like one practice in, and then they would have had to play a game. So they, Mount St. Joe and, and Hanover, had the conversation, and they both felt good. And, and Matt Theobald, the, the coach at Hanover, called me on Friday night at dinner, and you know, he says, "Hey, you're only gonna. We're doing this." So he he gave me the heads up. I knew it was happening. So I'm like, "Okay, fine. You, everyone's got to take care of their team." It wasn't like somebody was trying to duck somebody else. He's just trying to protect um, the you know the health of his team. So that was his decision to do that. And every program is different in our league. I mean, they are the premier program and, uh, you know, they're all back full force now. So they, when those guys came back, now they've got a full week and, you know, so we're going to get the Hanover team that we know that was picked to be first in the league. So, um, you know, that, that's their decision. Our decision would have been, uh, we would have, you know, we'd have played, but you know, we'd have been just down a few guys or a bunch of guys, whatever. I, I think you're going to get better by playing regardless. So, uh, but we're not in the same position as a Hanover, uh, right now. Uh, I, I think we're in the process of getting there, but you know, but, but every coach, it is all over the place. You know, some are upset that why they get to do it. Some like me, it's like, hey, good, whatever you need to help your program uh, mature. And that's what they did. They were down some D linemen, I believe, and yeah. uh, some running backs. I don't even think they played their top running back last week. Yeah. So uh, what they did against Mount St. Joe is uh, pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, they did, and they look good, and even with those guys. And I know what, what they basically did is those kids that – were not that they just got back from COVID, you know, they got to play in the scrimmage because, you know, they were whatever they, they test, you know, they, they had a protocol to come back to play. They just didn't have any practice. So they, they used that as a practice. And uh, so I, I can see why they would do that because you don't want to keep hitting on each other. If you could, if both teams agree, Hey, let's, you know, let's scrimmage, we'll get better. And, and I think they both got better from that experience. Where do you have to be really good this week to uh, compete mm. against these guys, coach? Well, I, I think we have to uh, be more attack oriented on all sides of the ball. Come out and be in a position where we are not in any way, shape, or form intimidated that they are so good. Uh, we know they're good, but you know we can't control that. It, you can never really control the opponent. It's like we have to control our effort, our assignment, our technique, and when we do that then I I think we will mature and start to be the program that we are building uh, for the long haul here. Not a game you can play where you're thinking too much. No, no, and that's why it's just going to be. That's what it sounds like your guys are are kind of in that. A lot of thinking early in that game. Then when they just turned it loose, you know, and had fun playing the game and forgot about anything but just there, what they could control, we got a little better at that point. So I think that this is going to be one of those deals coming in And, uh, you know, we're going to do everything we can. I mean, we don't go into any game thinking you're going to lose. You're going to go into this game like, hey, what do we have to do to to be successful and win this football game? So um, it will be a challenge, Um, maybe our biggest challenge of the year, Um, although there are some other teams. I'm Mount St. Joe's tremendous as well. But, um, you know. And there's some other teams that showed up in the league that, wow, like Bluffton did a great job in their opener beating Manchester, and Franklin uh, got after Anderson really. We're playing a lot of young guys in their program, you know, that have been built up. I think they, they scored a bunch of points against uh, Anderson. They both – it was a shootout from my understanding. So, you know, a lot going on in the league. I'm glad our conference is playing. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of conferences are not playing. So we're fortunate to have that and that – lets our our players improve and have an opportunity just to keep getting better and um we will benefit as a program because we're playing this spring 
webcast two o'clock Saturday. Jim yes. Funderburg, Jim Bellamy on the call for yeah. you guys, and mm-hmm. that'll be on your website, the defianceathletics dot com website. Yeah, it'll be awesome, and um, you know, and you know, we know we can't let anybody. Uh, oh, I know we can have uh, recruits, uh, some recruits there, but they'll have to go through a testing protocol, I think, and you know, or uh, cleared like it, like any recruit coming on campus. And I think the the big thing is that, uh, you know, parents uh, of the, of our players, but there are no visiting fans. Uh, and, and in fact, I found out nobody in the conference is allowing visiting fans. So it's not just us. So, um, you know, that's just the way the conference is. I, you know, I heard from the commissioner that, that they may be revisiting that week by week and, and it could change. Uh, as the season goes along and you know obviously on this podcast we'll announce it and the school will announce it and uh, if it does change because we'd love to see fans out there but hey we got to be safe and you know presidents make these decisions and they're they're informed at a different level than a football coach or an athletic director so you know we'll, we'll do as we need to at least we get the play absolutely that's the best thing good luck on saturday coach we'll uh, talk to you again next week all right thanks Lynn. Okay. I want to thank you for joining us on the Swarm and Shoot Football Show. If you're listening to this podcast, make sure to subscribe in iTunes. Give us a rating, comment on the show. If you'd like to get all kinds of updates, go to our website at swarmandshoot.com, where you will be up to date on all of our podcasts with audio and YouTube versions on there as well. See feature articles on our current players and alumni, along with updates of what's going on in the program. Take a minute and subscribe with your email to receive these regular alerts every time we update the website. 